Hey EV fans, welcome back to Jim's EV Adventures. In this episode, we're taking a quick dive into the history of electric vehicles starting all the way back in the 1830s. From clunky prototypes to the sleek EVs we drive today, we're going to explore how these cars evolved and why the modern lithium-ion battery has made them not just possible, but a game changer for everyone. We will also take a quick look at why the internal combustion engine became the drive terrain of choice early in the horseless carriage movement at the turn of the 20th century. So buckle up for an electric ride through time. First, we're going to cover that period of time between 1832 and 1900. Starting almost 200 years ago, electric vehicles are not new. Again, they go back almost two centuries. In 1832, Scottish inventor Robert Anderson built one of the first electric carriages powered by a crude, non-rechargeable battery. Think of it as a science experiment on wheels. Slow and impractical, but proof that electricity could move a vehicle. Move forward a few decades, the lead-acid battery was invented in 1859, but it did not become scalable until the early 1880s. It is likely but not proven that the first human-powered carrying electric vehicle with its own power source was driven down the streets of Paris in 1881 by Gustave Pierre Trouvé. By 1884, things got serious Improved battery designs led to practical EVs, and Thomas Parker, who was responsible for electrifying the London Underground, built an EV in 1884 and was using it for urban transport. By 1900, EVs were a big deal in the U.S., making up about a third of all vehicles that were on the road. There were not many. They were quiet, clean, and easier to drive than gas or steam-powered cars, which were noisy, and required constant maintenance. Women especially loved EVs for their simplicity. No cranking required, but what happened? Why did their popularity wane? By the 1910s, gasoline cars took over. Henry Ford's Model T, introduced in 1908, was cheap and mass-produced, making gas cars affordable. Huge oil discoveries kept fuel prices low and gas stations popped up everywhere while EV charging was limited to the urban landscape. Remember, there was no rural electrification project in 1910. That didn't come about until the 1920s here in the USA and it was not completed even until the 1960s. Early batteries were also very heavy, expensive, and could not match the range of gas cars, often topping out at just 50 miles. By the 1930s, EVs were mostly gone from mainstream roads, relegated to niche uses like electric delivery carts, and for decades they stayed in the shadows with internal combustion reigning supreme. EVs started to spark again in the 1970s, thanks to the oil crisis and growing environmental awareness. The 1973 oil embargo made gas scarce, pushing innovators to rethink electric power. Small companies built limited-run EVs, but batteries were still clunky and mostly heavy lead-acid types with very short ranges. The most manufactured EV of all time in the USA until the Model S passed its production numbers in 2012 was the city car produced by Sebring Vanguard Incorporated here in Sebring, Florida. There were fits and spurts of EVs throughout the 1980s, but the big movement came in 1996 with General Motors EV1, a sleek electric coupe with a range of about 70 to 100 miles. It used nickel metal hydride batteries, a step up from lead acid, but still not perfect. The EV1 gained a cult following, but GM discontinued it by 2003, citing high costs and limited demand. Still, it showed what EVs could be and set the stage for the modern era. 
Enter the lithium-ion battery, the tech that changed everything. When it was first developed in the 1980s and commercialized in the 1990s by researchers like John Goodenough, they were expensive and hard to manufacture. Lithium-ion batteries are lightweight, rechargeable, and pack way more energy than older lead-acid or nickel-metal hydride batteries. By the 2000s, they were ready for EVs. Tesla's 2008 Roadster was a breakthrough, a sexy electric sports car with a 245-mile range, powered by thousands of lithium-ion cells like those in laptops. It proved EVs could be fast, fun, and practical. Why are lithium-ion batteries so great? They store more energy per kilogram than any other battery out there, about 150 to 200 watt-hours per kilogram compared to only 30 or 40 watt-hours for lead-acid batteries. They charge faster and last longer, up to a thousand or more charge cycles, and lose less energy over time. This made EVs accessible to the masses, with models like the Nissan LEAF and the Tesla Model S offering ranges over 200 miles. Costs have plummeted and battery prices have dropped from about $1,100 per kilowatt hour in 2010 to about $120 dollars per kilowatt hour in 2024, making EVs cheaper to build and buy. Now, as the shift away from internal combustion engines continues to gain momentum, global EV sales hit 14 million in 2024, with charging networks expanding fast from Tesla superchargers to public stations powered by renewables. There are currently over 80,000 DC fast charge stalls in the USA today. That number is growing rapidly as companies like Walmart and Ayana and BP Pulse enter the fray, and many more companies are following their lead. Lithium-ion batteries didn't just revive EVs, it made them a no-brainer. Models like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Rivian R1T, and the Chevrolet Bolt all offer ranges over 250 miles with prices starting way under $40,000. Fast charging tech can juice the battery up to 80% in 20 minutes or less in some cases. And the future's even brighter. Solid state batteries and manganese rich batteries already in testing could double range and cut charging times further by 2030. EVs are now practical for road trips city commutes, and everything in between, just like I've shown on my many adventures here on this channel. They're not just for tech geeks or eco-warriors, they're for anyone who loves to drive an automobile. EV fans, that's the story of how electric cars went from an 1830s experiment almost 200 years ago to today's lithium-ion powered revolution. What's your favorite EV from history? Or which modern model are you eyeing? Drop it in the comments. Hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more from Jim's EV Adventures. Let's keep exploring the road ahead, and I will see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. And drive electric. <music>